any key insights, any aha moments um, that felt particularly meaningful for you? And um, yeah, so maybe yes, we can just do it one one by one. I'll post the link again here, but uh, just maybe the set, the breakout room one can go first. Maybe Linda, do, do you feel like giving a short summary? Oh, are we number one? Okay, oh, cool. I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, well, we had quite some cool ideas. We will definitely try to share them in the shared document as well. Um, I think main thing was that we wanted to continue with sustainability related things that are not necessarily related to the virus. Um, also to keep people uh, yeah, busy at home with sustainability. And then we wanted to do some things about sustainability at home, but also more worldwide things uh, like um, petitions that you can sign or big events that you can uh, join online or maybe challenges that you can join, like uh, someone came up with a Gozia challenge. Um, and we've also been thinking about um, more the reflection part of what is this whole crisis doing to our society and how can we be part of this paradigm shift in a positive way. So sharing articles related to that or webinars, or these kind of things. Cool. Um, thanks a lot. Then maybe a session two. Can somebody from session two uh, recap? Um, yeah. So we talked about about how we could um, still have sort of events, but on an online basis. And um, we actually, the main thing that we came up with which is to be very active on social media and maybe you can cook a vegetarian meal using zoom or you can show clips about how you can diy stuff or how you can go zero waste and we also thought like a quiz would be nice we were thinking maybe we can make a quiz with um a couple of green offices and then everybody has this quiz and can use it um with their university Awesome. awesome. Thanks. Hi, I'll do that then. Um, so we were talking about how to basically do more offline because we kind of noticed that, um, well, at least in our case like people are already on uh their laptops so much for tutorials or work or lectures that is actually quite um exhausting to also spend time on your laptop if you want to go to event for green office so we found that that's quite tiring so we're now organizing a walk where people just um uh walk where they would like to go and then they clean up litter so um, and then post a picture of that. And we're organizing that with a couple of other organizations in Maastricht as well. And um, from the feedback I heard, actually a lot of other people also thought that was a nice initiative. Um, and I hope they also implement that. And other than that, it's also about maybe balancing the home environment, which we uh, kind of talked about for a bit as well, and how to make sure that everyone is still engaged um, especially for new members because we had a few cases where there were newly people uh, new people hired and then it's quite difficult to actually keep them engaged into everything that's going on in green office so those were actually the main points that, that we talked about which was quite nice awesome thank you uh, session four please You're still muted. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize. <laughs> okay, uh, so our struggle was mainly that people are less seem in our surroundings are less interested in the sustainability crisis because they are more focused on the Corona crisis and they found it difficult to have both in their head. Um, so our vision on that was mainly to really uh, show people that the Corona crisis and the sustainability crisis are really linked with each other, and then find ways in 
uh, the corona crisis and the sustainability crisis to link them with each other so for example local food is way more sustainable but it's also really applicable for the corona crisis uh, situations and we also found other ways people can do at home for example the minimalist, minimalist challenge is also a really nice challenge where people actually have to throw away uh, things and people are at home a lot so they can actually do that um, so to actually really link to sustainability and the corona crisis right, session five please can i ask a question about session four sure yes. Um, how do you prevent that, um, yeah, the fact that you maybe, yeah, link the corona crisis in a, I don't know, I find it difficult to link the two in our social media expressions because I also have the feeling that you, um, that a, a lot of people are making links, not only in the sustainability movement, but in any movement, everybody is linking everything to corona. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you prevent, yeah, people, yeah, being against this or don't like, yeah. I find it difficult myself, so I'm wondering how you do this. Um, that's a good question, actually. Uh, we didn't really talk about that. I don't know if other people of my session have an idea for this. Well, I think that is the main problem, and I will share a link of a discussion I found between two philosophers. I think it's in Dutch, um, but maybe it can be translated as well. Um, which was interesting on whether or not you should use crises like these uh, to, fo to focus to your cause. Mm -hmm. hmm. And I also think it's not necessary to only link them. You don't maybe need to link them like directly in your communication, but it's more like, for example, with the local food, uh, it's a, something you can focus on, which is, it's also applicable to the Corona crisis, but it's also really like, I have focused on that before the whole Corona crisis, but it's something you just can, like have a few in both ways yeah yeah so you don't even have to mention that you're relating it to corona crisis but creative mm. cooking is something that's more necessary now than ever yeah Just exactly because everybody is at home it's yeah it's more that people like see it as important as well uh yeah yeah, and please also share the link to the philosopher because as green office wageningen we would like to share links to Philosophers and stuff, we, we are a bit scared of giving our own opinion on this. We would really like to share like articles from philosophers that write about this topic. Cool. And um, yeah, let's let's wrap it up with each of the with with the with the other sessions. Um, I think number five was next. Okay, I can do it then. Um, so we are thinking in multiple directions because one, um, like our green office was saying, okay, maybe we can organize different events because we had the sustainability week uh, and we want, might want to do some events online. And some other people from our group were saying, well, maybe we, we were thinking not even to do anything anymore because like what someone from another group earlier said as well, students might get overwhelmed by all the screen time or all the information. Um, but nevertheless, we did come up with some ideas to do uh, replace some of our physical events with online events. Um, so to share some of them, we had a Netflix party idea, so just sharing a documentary and watching them at the same time, um, to have a Kahoot, so some kind of, well, with fun facts, um, not necessarily only stability related, but also just about the wonders of nature, you know, the like, fun, um, fun ideas. Um, with guest lectures, someone else from my group had the idea to make some kind of Q&A, a session with a person so not have to have the whole guest lecture of me an hour two hours 45 minutes but then to um, have some kind of interview with that person and then make some kind of small video of that of five minutes so if you're good with making videos that would be a very nice idea um, and we also have some kind of zero waste challenges because now everyone is hoarding stuff um, it would be a nice moment to actually try to practice uh, zero waste That's it. Awesome, thanks a lot. Then uh, let's move on to session six. Um, um, we also talked about um, how 
how the government can suddenly just know how to handle a crisis and with the environmental crisis it uh, lasted a lot longer so uh, how can we learn uh, what, what can we learn from these uh, crisis actions and habits and maybe um take a take away for also uh, use uh, for uh, for the environmental crisis so it's a bit like uh, group four also said uh, the links with the with with uh, COVID and sustainability. Then also um, that it's maybe not really bad right now that you can do your activities. It's, it's, uh, it's sad, but you can also use time to really organize your next year um, better than you did the uh, years before. So those are two main topics we talked about. Thanks a lot. And then session seven, please. Session seven. Do you want to talk about it, Seth? Uh, yeah. um, I uh, forgot the first question that uh, Sophie mentioned actually, so I was, that's why I wanted someone else to take it, but I can uh, remember the rest. Um, so I had the question, I basically asked um, uh, what people are doing right now, if the weekly meetings or once in two weeks, however long they meet, uh, what's the status with that, uh, what kind of projects are they focusing on these days, uh, and uh, are they having different um, social media strategies as compared to normal times. Um, yeah, I, I don't really remember much more actually. <laughs> Do you remember uh, any more, Anne Sophie? Yeah, so I, I've taken some notes in the document. Um, so the, the question that Sophie asked was um, how to communicate about this to your audience. So how to introduce it um, while staying positive. And I think this has also come up in the other groups as well. Um, so do you want to engage people in a way that they can also give some feedback on the content they would like to see? Um, do you facilitate extra um, sessions, meetings? Um, how do you share your knowledge? But at the same time, you, you don't really know how, how this crisis is going to go. So also try to keep it honest and, and, and real. Um, so that was what we talked about for a while. And then, yeah, the day-to-day -day, um, organization of the Green Office, how is it changing at this moment? For some people, uh, there's more work. For other people, it's less, less work. So we also talked about that. And then um, yeah, one of the questions that we've heard before. Yeah. So Sophie also had the really good idea of uh, forming a community group online where people can uh, share recipes and suggestions and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, I just remembered that. That that was a really good idea as well. Uh, we, we also discussed on uh, how we should be slightly careful about making uh, two political statements as we discussed earlier. I think it was group four. Uh, so publishing, uh, let's say, posting pictures of the environment being cleaner with lesser human activity. Uh, so to make sure that we are not uh, necessarily, um, yeah, making it too negative maybe or making it uh, someone's fault, so to say, but more uh, encouraging the aspect that this is possible uh, in normal times uh, with voluntary effort as well and how this should be communicated efficiently. Great, thanks a lot. And then uh, last one, uh, session eight. Was anyone ready in session eight? Um, I, was, I was in session eight and um, we also ended with discussing, yeah, like the political implications of this. So I, I think the last point that was said is really good, like not to get involved. Positive about it, not blaming someone. Um, also something we talked about a lot was um, about staying active and relevant with bio or still reducing screen time because we all experienced that we spent a lot of time on the computer. So, um, I think 
yeah, we tried to find ways to um, reduce that. And uh, we also talked about the minimalism challenge in this way. Um, and then someone proposed that uh, it's, it's nice to form WhatsApp groups or something if you have a challenge going like that, so you don't have to post too much. Don't overwhelm people that don't want to be um, included and then just take it to other platforms like WhatsApp groups or something. All right, so uh, we're already a bit over the time that we scheduled for this. Uh, I sense that there's quite a lot of momentum here. Uh, if 